welcome once again to the uh, Waters and Stanton video channel. Several videos ago I discussed the inverted L antenna. The inverted L antenna has been a popular antenna with ham radio operators over the years because well, it's such a versatile way of uh, uh, erecting an antenna. It's very convenient and it's very effective. It predominantly has low angle radiation, so it's good for DX, but uh, there is some horizontal radiation from it. So it, in many ways, it's a sort of a you know, universal antenna that covers all sorts of uh, different applications. And it's very popular on the low frequency bands. Uh, um, operators that operate on 160 meters and 80 meters tell me that the vertical polarization from the antenna is excellent so it gives very good low angle radiation. It means to say of course you've got to have a tall antenna. When I say tall I mean on 80 meters you're talking about what a um, uh, 20 meter tall vertical, quarter way vertical. So if you bend the top over, you can reduce the height of it quite significantly without perhaps losing too much of a full size vertical antenna in terms of full size from ground to sky. Now in the uh, video that uh, I published, I discussed a rather novel way of feeding it. If you feed it at the far end, it's a high impedance because a quarter way vertical with the uh, one end going straight into the ground is low impedance, maximum current, and a quarter wave away you've got a high impedance. So you can actually feed it with a 49 to 1 unun. And it gives uh, quite a, uh, an efficient way of operating an inverted L. The downside is it basically only covers one band. Let me show you on a sheet of paper what, um, what I actually did very briefly. The inverted L, which is grounded, we have a vertical section there, we have a horizontal section there. Those, that point is joined together, that's one piece of wire. And that will be a quarter wave length of wire, wire long. So if we're talking about the 40 meter band, we'd have a length of wire which would be 10 meters long. That's a quarter wave on 40 meters. This point here is earthed, and we'd have some radials. Like that. That's a vertical. It's just rather like having a vertical antenna with the top bent over. Here we've got a high impedance because we've got a, a high current point there, a low impedance there. A quarter wave away from a low impedance point will be a high impedance point. And in order to feed that point there, we need a transformer. And the convenient way to do that is a 49 to 1 transformer there. And so that 49 to 1 transformer is connected to the wire there and then you've got coax cable going back to your transceiver. Because this is resonant and because that transformer gives a pretty good match you should get a very good VSWR. You don't have any impedant matching problems there and you'll get some pretty good results. So as you, as you can see this basically is a single band antenna but one or two of you have written in quite rightly and pointed out that it's very easy to add a couple of bands to this. Now, if we uh, look at the uh, 40 meter um, inverted L, which is a, a, a 40 meter quarter wave, we can actually make it cover the 20 meter and the 10 meter bands very easily. Let me, uh, let me just show you. This is the inverted L that we have. And we know that this was resonant on the 40 meter band because this is a quarter wavelength of wire on 40 meters. In other words, we've got 10 meters of wire there. We had an earth point here and we had some radials. We don't need that earth point anymore. And in fact, we don't need those radials. So what we do, instead of having a direct connection to ground, we have that open circuit there. There's a gap. We could actually have a switch. A switch that is open. When that's open circuit, we've now got a quarter wave length, we've, sorry, we've now got a half wave length of wire on 20 meters, because 10 meter length of wire is a quarter wave on 40 meters, and we have that earthed quarter wave vertical. If we open that switch, our 10 meter length of wire becomes a half wave 
on the 20 meter band. So by opening that switch there, we cover 10 meters, 20 meters, sorry. And we still got our 49 to one unun there. And we know that a half wavelength of wire will work on its harmonics and the next harmonic from 20 meters is 10 meters. So we've now got 10 meter coverage and 20 meter coverage. If we close that switch, that 10 meter length of wire now becomes a grounded quarter wave and we've still got a good match there. So by the simple insertion of a switch, we have got an antenna that resonates on 40 meters, 20 meters, and 10 meters. And you see it'll fit into a very small garden because we could, for example, have five meters of wire there and five meters of wire there to give us 10 meters. So you, if you've got a short garden, you've only got a horizontal length of five meters and you don't have to have too much in the way of support there because you only need five meters there. Those lengths or the proportions are not cast in stone. You can go up to six meters there and four meters there. You can, you can play around with those dimensions. The critical dimension is the total length. You need a total length of wire, 10 meters long, and that will give you the three band coverage. So with the same length of wire, if we keep using 40 meters as the band um, for sort of demonstrating this principle, we have a length of wire which is basically 10 meters long. We know that if we earth it and feed it at the far end with a 49 to 1 unun, it will work on the 40 meter band as quite an efficient inverted L antenna. And if we disconnect the point to where it reaches the ground, still using the 49 to 1 unun at the far end, we have an antenna that now covers 20 meters and 10 meters. So simply by um, opening the circuit where it meets the ground. In other words, lifting it off the ground so it's just hanging, um, I don't know, a, a foot or so above the ground. Then we've got an antenna which covers the 10 meter and the 20 meter band. So you can see how flexible an inverted L antenna could be. Now I know some of you will say, okay, well, uh, you could put uh, uh, an external antenna tuner there and that you're absolutely right you could put a, uh, an external antenna tuner at the point where the L is about to touch the earth and that will enable you to match that antenna to uh, various bands um, certainly more bands we've covered in this um, uh, simple uh, uh, example but because the downside of that is you've got to purchase an external antenna tuner unit and uh, that involves an outlay. The whole purpose of this is to see or to show how simple uh, an inverted L can be and it fits into quite a small space so it's very attractive for uh, the small garden, um, for SOTA, uh, parks on the air. But there's some other things you can do and in the next video I'm going to show you another trick you can do with an inverted L, which makes it really attractive for um, portable operation. And uh, I'll cover that, uh, as I say, in an upcoming video. It uh, may well, I'm not sure it'll be in the next video, but it'll be in a, an upcoming video anyway. And that is a neat little trick, which uh, a lot of you may not have thought about. So you can make that length of wire do some other tricks. There we are. In the meantime, thanks for your support on this channel. Thanks for your support at the shop and on the uh, uh, website. Don't forget to press the subscribe button because that uh, alerts you to the next video coming up. And I want to again thank you for all the suggestions you, 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 you make. There's all sorts of wonderful sort of, uh, ideas you come up with. And it's heartening to know that a lot of the newcomers have found this uh, uh, channel particularly useful. I know sometimes uh, we tend to cover some fairly basic concepts. I suppose we'll base it perhaps to the more experienced, but uh, to the less experienced, I, I hope that uh, we can give you some ideas. You know, antennas are fascinating things. And uh, you can read all sorts of uh, textbooks about antennas but really and truly you can't beat getting out in the garden or out in the open and playing around with antennas you'll learn 
an awful lot and sometimes there's some surprises you can get some really good performance out of antennas that perhaps the textbooks would suggest aren't ideal and of course the whole point of amateur radio is for experimenting we're not professionals we're amateurs but because we're amateurs we often try things that we're told shouldn't work it's very encouraging to find something that shouldn't work that does work and i'm sure you've got some examples there to let me know about so if you've got any examples let me know put it under this video and uh, other viewers can read uh, all your comments and all your ideas in the meantime you enjoy your ham radio take care look forward to seeing you in the next video bye for now oh, well, there we are now i've got to edit it and uh, do it together oh well